Hey everybody, it's Ben here. It is day two of working on radiant heat for my new garage. Uh, building a new garage, the older one was junk falling down, the concrete was all busted up, so it was time for a complete redo. And since I was going to repour the concrete slab anyways, I thought let's put some heat in it. So yesterday I had some help putting in all the PEX tubing, uh, getting that in, stapling it down to the insulation, getting the pattern laid, laid out right. So today I'm going to hook up the manifold so I can pressure test it, make sure there aren't any leaks, that there wasn't an accidental hole in it, anything like that. I don't expect there to be, but I figure it's still a good thing to check. So I'll show you how to do that, and then tomorrow we'll pour the concrete. So just for starters, there are four circuits of half-inch PEX tubing for the radiant floor. It's stapled down over two-inch Owens Corning Fomular insulation, R10, and it all comes to this box in the middle west side of the garage where the tubing is routed up through there, and then it's going to go up to the manifold, which will be mounted on the wall when there's a wall here. Um, I do have it laid out right here, and I'm going to hook the tubing up to it. The manifold I'm using is the Watts brand. I bought the manifold and all of the PEX tubing at Menards, which is a uh, an area big box home improvement store, all off the shelf parts. Got a little uh, piece of tubing here just to show you how this is going to work. So this is a compression fitting, which is nice because I don't need a PEX crimping tool or anything like that. Just slide the nut on, slide this compression ring on, make sure the end is cut square. And then this piece goes inside. It's not quite barbed, it's more like it's, it's ridged, it has kind of rings. So you just push it in all the way, slide that compression ring up, and then uh, stick it into the manifold, slide up the nut, and then tighten it down, that's it. So then the tube just goes into the manifold, nut goes on, tighten this down, and then give it about a half a twist with a adjustable wrench. And that's it, it's pretty straightforward. The hardest thing is uh, fighting the pecs because it is uh, pretty stiff tubing. So now I just have to do this with all the connections on here. Now another thing I did while uh, installing all these PEX lines was that I made sure to label them all. So here is circuit number two. This is the supply end. Down here this is the return end. Those are plastic labels. I just used one of these little uh, label making machines. Real handy for this kind of stuff. And then of course I also have a diagram uh, showing where the circuits are and what the exact layout is. Okay, so I've got all eight connections, both ends of four circuits connected to the manifold, both the return, the supply. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, some pressure testing with air. So I've got a 100 PSI uh, pressure gauge, and what I did was I connected it up to, uh, this is a component that's going to go on the end up here. Uh, it has a garden hose connection for filling, and I used a garden hose to three-quarter inch pipe thread adapter, uh, three-quarter inch pipe nipple, and then my gauge, which also has a Schrader valve on here. That's like a, a car uh, air stem right there. So what I can do is get my air compressor. I'll hook this up to the manifold, and then I'll put some air in here so I can pressure test the whole thing, make sure all my connections are good, there's no holes or any other problems. Okay, so last thing on this manifold, I ended up moving the, uh, the pressure gauge from over here to over here just because that was a... Uh, um, like the garden hose style connection, which I've never liked. They never seem to really get nice and solid. This way I could go straight in with just a one inch to three quarter inch adapter, three quarter inch, and then the air valve. Also, I've got a disconnect valve right here. So I filled air in, let it go through the tubes, come back. This is closed. Um, after I put the air in, I closed this up and I'll just double check it tomorrow morning before the cement truck comes for the pour. 
So one of the other things that I tested was uh, pulling out and reusing these compression connections and it seems like those work really nice. One thing that's cool about that is I can just uh, connect this all up, pressurize it, test it, make sure everything works without having to cut these hoses and uh, get them exactly where I want them the first time. So right now I just have it temporarily laid over to the side. Tomorrow they're going to pour the concrete slab. After that um, I can disconnect all this, put this out of the way so this isn't right where I'm working when we build the walls, then after the walls are up, I can mount this up exactly where I want it to go, cut the pecs to the right lengths, connect everything up, make it look really nice, and then after that, fill it with fluid, attach the heater, and do everything else. But uh, it's going into Sunday evening, and overall, uh, installing pecs was a great project. Uh, like pretty much all my projects, I've never done this before. I just uh, read and go to web pages and the library and uh, ask around, just learn what I can. Uh, I hope you've learned a little bit uh, from me working on this. I know uh, I certainly learn a lot every time I work on a project. So uh, tomorrow we'll be pouring the slab, and after that, uh, keep working on the garage. See you next time.